Okay, so I know this is gonna start coming off negative, especially after my video from yesterday in which I was discussing and assessing whether Zach Levine is worth a max contract, but in reality, this is more so in response to all of the negative sentiment and toxicity that you see on Bulls Twitter and other platforms, and just the discussions I see coming from Bulls fans in general as a result. So I wanted to share my thoughts on this topic. So if you missed my video from yesterday discussing Zach Levine, feel free to check it out. I'll leave it linked in the description as well as the end screen of this one. But in in today's video, we're going to be addressing this common theme among Bulls fans that we've been hearing throughout the season that the Bulls have officially lost the trade that they made for Nikola Vucevic and assess whether or not this claim is valid. Also, a big shout out to our latest sponsor, DraftKings, for sponsoring this video, but more on that in a little bit. So what's going on, everyone? You're listening to Bull Central here. Hope you're all doing well. So at the trade deadline last season, it was thought that the Bulls likely weren't going to be making any big moves. The new front office of Arturis Karnasovas and Mark Eversley had made it pretty clear that in their first season on the job, that they were going to use this as an evaluation year. And in that first offseason, outside of firing Jim Boylan, thank God, they didn't make a ton of player moves. No trades, no big signings other than signing Garrett Temple to a one-year deal and then not re-signing Chris Dunn. So when the trade deadline was approaching, it was clear that the Bulls needed to address some holes within the team, most notably the center position and the point guard position. But again, it was still thought that the bigger moves weren't going to be made until this offseason because the Bulls still had a very young core with a lot of talent that you could theoretically build around. And of course, because it was going to be a full evaluation year. Well, lo and behold, the Bulls made a huge move at the deadline, signaling they're looking to expedite the rebuild and position themselves, this team, to start winning now. And that move involved the Bulls trading Wendell Carter Jr., Otto Porter Jr., and two first-round picks that were top four protected in exchange for Nikola Vucevic. Those were the Bulls' 2021 and 2023 first-round picks, by the way. Now, it's a lot for Vucevic, but you also have to understand the kind of going rate for an all-star in the NBA, which last season, Vucevic was an all-star. The guy was averaging near 25 and 12 on 40% shooting from three, and that was the Magic's franchise player. Uh, he was also uh, on a pretty friendly team contract for that kind of productivity. So yes, it seems like trading a lot for Vucevic, especially now given that he hasn't produced to that level that we saw on the Magic, but that's the price you have to pay for an all-star. Now, after the trade, early returns weren't the best. The Bulls didn't really look that much better and end up missing the play-in despite making a trade for an all-star. But context is also important there because uh, this was during the shortened bubble season or post-bubble season, I should say, in which the schedule was compressed. Guys had little to no time to practice and gel together to build that chemistry. And with the new look roster, and of course, Zach Levine missed a few weeks at the end of the season because of COVID, which led to the Bulls falling out of the play-in position. Now, fast forward to this season, and you've had a very up and down year from Vucevic. Vucevic started off the season really slow, not shooting the ball well, not playing aggressively. He was turning the ball over a lot. And you had a fair amount of Bulls fans that would say, trade Vucevic immediately. He needs to be gone, which of course is always reactionary. But in any event, Vucevic finally started putting together some good games. His confidence was back. He was knocking down his shots, rebounding the ball better, and actually playing solid defense, which is a bit uncharacteristic for Vucevic. But then, of course, you see these peaks and valleys from Vooch. Really good stretches, followed by really bad stretches. And although he's still one of the Bulls' best players, and a very critical player to the Bulls' overall success, it's pretty clear Vooch is not playing like the All-Star that we had traded for. Which, to an extent, you somewhat had to expect that you're taking a gamble on a guy who is 30 years old at the time of the trade and was being used as a number one option on his current team to then having him be a number two option last season and now the number three option after the Bulls added to Rosen. But either way, the going rate for what you traded for to get an all-star hasn't really shown up as an all-star. Vooch is actually putting up 18 points per game, which is the lowest for him since the 2017-18 season. He's also shooting the lowest percentage since that season, and he's shooting a pretty awful 30% from three, which is the lowest for him since the 2016-17 season, where he only attempted 1.3 uh, attempts per game for threes. That was really before Vucevic started developing his three-point shot. Prior to that, he was barely taking any threes. So it's not the best. On top of that, what the Bulls traded for in Wendell Carter Jr. and that first round pick, which the Bulls, because they did not make the playoffs, that pick ended up being a lottery pick at number eight. And the Magic used that to draft Franz Wagner. Both of these guys have been having very solid seasons. 
Wendell Carter Jr. is having the best season of his career thus far, averaging 14.4 points per game, 10.4 rebounds, and he's doing so on pretty good efficiency, shooting 51% from the field, and he's finally shown confidence with his three-point shot. Uh, which we really didn't see from the Bulls at all. Uh, he's only shooting 32%, but on 3.4 attempts per game, which when he was with the Bulls, he was only taking around one three per game. Uh, Wendell has also been a solid player on defense and has the highest PER of his career. Then you have Franz Wagner, who has been one of the better rookies of this class. He likely will get an all-rookie first-team selection. He's putting up 15.5 points per game, 4.6 rebounds, shooting 47%, 36% from three. And he's a pretty versatile player with his scoring and playmaking. And of course, he's only 20 years old with a lot of room left to grow. And then, of course, there is the 2023 draft pick the Bulls sent to the Magic, which we won't know what it will convey to and who ultimately will be selected. But that pick, at least let's hope anyway, will not be a very high draft pick for the Magic. Certainly not a lottery pick now that the Bulls are a playoff team. So speaking of the playoffs, that leads me into the sponsor of today's video, DraftKings. Now, as you know, this channel is focused on the NBA and the Bulls, but if there is one thing we can all get excited about this time of year, and that is college basketball, and this Sunday we will find out who will get their invite to go dancing this March. The teams have been fighting all season long to secure their shot at being crowned the champion, and that's what makes the atmosphere around college basketball so exciting. Now, just as the teams are in pursuit of glory, DraftKings Sportsbook is giving their new customers a shot at royalty with 40 to 1 odds on any college basketball game. Yes, guys, 40 to 1 odds. You bet $5 on any college basketball team to win their next game, and if they win, DraftKings will pay out $200 in free bets. DraftKings Sportsbook has nearly endless ways to get in on the action from same game parlays to future betting. Feel the sweat with DraftKings now. Also, anyone and everyone can enter a free pool with $100,000 in prizes. All you have to do is answer a handful of questions like which team will make the tournament and which conference will have the most teams in the tournament. Then follow along Sunday night and track your results. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the promo code BULLCENTRAL. Throw down just $5 on any college basketball game of your choice and get $200 in free bets if the team you choose wins. That's code BULLCENTRAL at DraftKings Sportsbook. A link to the site and the code can be found in the description and I'll be there to join in on the fun as well. And with that being said, let's get back into the content. So that's how things have transpired. Up until this moment regarding the Vucevic trade and the biggest thing I hear from Bulls fans is, well, was it worth it? Because Wendell Carter Jr., is playing well. He's only 22. Wagner looks great as a rookie. Who knows what his potential is going to look like? And Vucevic, who is now 31, hasn't been playing to an all-star level that we traded for. But here's what I think a lot of fans are forgetting. And I'll start with the most important point. Without the Bulls trading for Vucevic last season, you do not get DeMar DeRozan this offseason. Period. As much convincing as you can try to do and sway DeRozan to come to Chicago, the fact of the matter is without a team that is showing they mean business and looking to win now by making a big move for an all-star, you don't have the leverage and attention of a player like DeRozan to join a team like the Bulls where he can win. If this team still had Wendell Carter Jr. and their number eight pick, because at the time we didn't know what kind of player Wagner was going to be or any rookie for that matter since they hadn't played in the NBA yet, DeMar DeRozan would look at this Bulls team and say, that's still a rebuilding team, and at this stage in my career, I'm not looking for that. But when you have Vucevic, Levine, and of course they signed Lonzo Ball and Alex Caruso just days before DeRozan, which it's not a certainty that the Bulls would have been able to draw them in without a big move going for Vucevic, but that's a little bit more debatable because Lonzo especially seemed like was a big Bulls target for a while. But without all of those pieces, you're not getting DeRozan. On top of that, have you not noticed that the Bulls are actually a good and relevant team again? Yes, I know they have been slumping recently, but for the most part, this is the best Bulls team we have seen in years. They're going to be making the playoffs for the first time in five years, and they're fun and exciting to watch again. This doesn't happen if the Bulls don't make that trade for Vucevic. Like, we would really prefer another year of rebuilding versus what we're seeing right now. Yes, Wendell Carter Jr. and Wagner have looked nice, but does anyone care to watch the Magic? They're the worst team in the NBA right now by record. Sure, their future looks bright to an extent, but a lot of people said that about the Bulls in terms of their future looking bright after they drafted Mark Innan and Wendell Carter Jr. But yet the Bulls were still one of the worst teams in the league and years away from competing and just showing signs of relevancy again. 
I don't know about you guys, but I was getting kind of tired of seeing my team rebuilding and being irrelevant season after season, which still would have been the case had the Bulls not traded for Vucevic. Not only that, but by continuing to try and build to the draft, keeping Wendell Carter Jr., you run the risk of losing Zach Levine if you have another season of not winning and missing the playoffs. Because Levine was getting frustrated and wanted to start winning in a front office that was committed to that. And I know some people would say, well, they could have at least traded a little bit less for Vucevic. It's not really acquiring Vuce that was the mistake. It was how much we gave up to get him. Well, I don't know who you would give up less for an all-star player in Vucevic to a team that was triggering a rebuild and looking to get younger and get as many assets as they could in return. They're not just going to take one first round pick. I've heard some people say, why not just trade Wendell Carter Jr. and just one first round pick? That's not enough. And of course, others would say, well, include Markin and Wendell Carter Jr. So at least you get to keep your picks. Again, the Magic want that draft capital to build for their future. I also hear a lot of people saying, well, Wendell Carter Jr. is thriving now, and he looks better than Vucevic as it is. I mean, that's a pretty big stretch. Yes, Wendell is having his best season so far in his career, but let's not get ahead of ourselves and put him over Vucevic. Vucevic is still a better rebounder, a better scorer, and although Wendell's defense has always been better than Vuce's, Wendell is actually having the lowest defensive production of his career thus far, probably because he's been upping his game on offense, while Vucevic has been having one of the best seasons on the defensive end. And I'll say this about Franz Wagner. Yeah, he has looked really good in his rookie season, better than some guys who were drafted ahead of him. But you know who also looked really good in his rookie season to where you thought he was going to be a franchise cornerstone? Lowry Markkinen, great rookie and great sophomore season, and then kind of fell off. Not saying that Wagner and Markkinen are similar type players because Wagner is a more versatile player than Markkinen is, more so just saying... We have seen this happen all the time in the NBA where a player will have a great rookie season and we think, well, if they can do this at the age of 20, imagine what they're going to be able to do when they're 26 and then the peak of their prime. Also, putting up numbers on a bad team in your rookie season like Markkinen did doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be putting up those kind of numbers when your team is good. So look, in short, the Bulls did not lose the Vucevic trade because Vucevic, without him, the Bulls don't get DeMar DeRozan. The Bulls likely would still be rebuilding, and because they would still be rebuilding, you likely lose Zach Levine in the offseason, and you kind of have to start over as a result looking for a franchise player. And for Vucevic, despite his struggles like I called out earlier, is still a productive player on this Bulls team that crashes the boards, is a big body in the paint, but can also spread the floor, well, kind of since he hasn't been shooting the three ball that well, but he hits them enough that defenses have to respect him when he's out there. And Vuce's experience and veteran leadership are going to come in handy going into the playoffs. But I want to know what you guys think, though. How do you guys feel about the Vucevic trade in general? Let me know in the comments. And as always, be sure to subscribe if you're a Bulls fan, as I do post daily Bulls content. Thanks again for tuning in, guys, and I will catch you in the next one.